couple of projects we've been working on over this weekend that I'd just like to update you on. They're quite big projects and as such we're not in anticipating that we're going to be able to work on them very quickly. So hence why I don't really think that I'm going to like keep updating you week after week after week. I'll update you intermittently when there's something worth updating you on. Um, the reason these projects are going to take long is because they're quite major and also um, we don't have all of the resources we need for them so it's going to take us a little while to accumulate everything that we need for these projects. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it could be several months down the line before they're finished. But I'll introduce them to you and show you what we're up to at this point in time. This is what this project looks like. So essentially what we've done here, oh, <laughs> hello. We haven't seen you for a while. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so what Vita and I um, have come to show you is this project here, which so far has involved um, digging holes for these two gigantic telegraph pole sized poles and then attaching them to the side of our what was carport and is now my potting shed and the plan here is to obviously <laughs> attach these two at the front and again attach a little bit of wood across the wall have some more cross pieces coming out and then we're going to roof this and this little lean-to will be where I keep our trailers, well we keep our trailers and also our ride-on mower slash mowers. We currently have these two. So that's the beginnings of this project here. Um, it'll just help the longevity of our trailers having them under cover they're rugged and robust things, but nevertheless, nothing lasts forever, so the more we can protect them, the better. And also getting the mowers out of here will create space that we need for another major project we have got planned for in here. But that's much, much further down the line. And then, <laughs> if I spin around yet again, you may notice the beginnings of my either Anglo-Saxon Longhouse or Neolithic Causeway, my version of uh, Woodhenge. This is the beginnings of our wood store. So, what we've done here, as you can see, is um, sunk all of the additional posts. So there were some in situ which formed part of the exterior wall of the uh, old orchard. And then what we did is kept the poles that were spare that we lifted from the rest of the boundary. And we basically shunted them closer together to create this nice long rectangular shape. Just for context, the span between them is, what was it, four or five meters, something like that, just to maybe help you gauge the, the scale of it. And then obviously <laughs> a lot more construction here because what we need to do is put wood along the walls and then attach the metal that we've started to accumulate and then obviously we also need to attach roof beams so we can put a roof on it. And when we've done that, <laughs> there's all sorts of interior racking that um, we want to put in to accommodate Will's woodworking wood and our wood for the firewood. This project is probably the one that's going to take by far the most patience on our part because these spans are gigantic and we don't have the wood for that. But we know someone who might. 
so we're going to wait and see and find out what's possible obviously we're trying to keep costs down to an absolute minimum so far both of these projects have cost us nothing whatsoever and even stuff like that metal was free so we're very keen on being frugal because <laughs> there's just so much expense so the cheaper we can do things the better but as I say, it may be a while before I can update you on this project, before we've made any progress worth updating you on. But there is another project that we might be tackling this week, a smaller project that's been in the making for quite a while. Um, so that might be something that we can look at over the coming days. Hopefully we can uh, knock that one out of the park, as they say, pretty quickly. But who knows? <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm very pleased with this progress that we've made. It's nice to keep things moving forward and to sort of make the property a bit more suitable for our needs. <laughs> there again. But uh, time is marching on, dusk is upon us. It'll be dark before you know it. So Vito and I are going to head on in and sit by the fire. And I'll catch up with you at some point later this week. Good morning. Oh, I don't mind telling you it's chilly today. <laughs> this is possibly the coldest morning I've encountered so far this winter. It's one of those chills you to the bone, like my nose feels like it's about to drop off. Anyway, <laughs> hence I'm all rugged up. I've got two pairs of trousers on. <laughs> but I'm about to get a bit hot anyway by um, starting to do a bit more work on the woods up here so I thought it was an appropriate opportunity to give you a quick update on the new Ryobi chainsaw chain that you saw me um, put on a couple of weeks ago I think at this point. So just to remind you I've got this brushless Ryobi 36 volt electric battery powered chainsaw and up to recently I've been using a power fit chain on it but I noticed last time I was in Bunnings that they've started stocking the Ryobi brand chainsaw chain for it. So I've been giving it a go. I've used it um, quite a few times now um, on various things, mostly thinning this dead wood, but we also used it for a bit of the work we were doing on breaking the fence that you might have seen last week and also putting up the um, storage for the trailers so anyway it's still doing a pretty good job it hasn't broken yet it sharpens really nicely um and it seems to keep sharper i think a bit longer than the other chain now the main problem i had with the other chain is that occasionally it would just snap so it remains to be seen if that happens with this one and you can see if you look more closely at the teeth this little notch here it's like as far back as you can reasonably sh um, sharpen it until you need to retire the chain. So I've got a way to go before I reach that point. But anyway, so far so good. I was just fetching some wood and I noticed this. Maybe you can make it out and I'm sh actually I'm hoping you can help me. It's clearly a caterpillar. Although I think the caterpillar's died. I can't make out if what's surrounding it is part of its chrysalis. The structure of its chrysalis, maybe it's failed over time. Or if it's like um, the sort of egg cases of parasites which have predated on it and killed it. You know how like some insects have that life cycle where they trap they trap other insects and then lay the eggs on it or around it, maybe, and then they eat the insect that it's been encased. And then off they go and do the process all over again. It's a bit hard to film. I'll go around the other side. Because uh, what you can see here are like those little white things seem to have holes which is what made me wonder if they were egg cases. I've got no idea, so if you happen to know, feel free to tell me. 
here we are later on in the day beginning that project i was telling you about which as you may or may not be able to tell is constructing this bridge if i had head a bit closer you may see here the remnants of the original bridge which burnt in the fire so quite a lot of the cross pieces burnt out and then all of the wood got burnt so it's a little bit structurally unsound now and actually to be fair it was always a bit wobbly so what we're going to do is construct a new bridge sort of a <laughs> quick and dirty bridge we have these poles this is about the span it's um not going to be a humongous bridge and what it goes over is this channel which overflows from our neighbour's pond down here and into our pond which is in the distance down there and then this is our other boundary with our neighbour's orchard beyond if I were to carry on down this way I'd eventually come to the Mr Darcy walk just to orientate you what I'm going to do whilst Will's preparing the wood to go across it is dig a little channel for each of these poles so that the poles nestle in the ground, meaning that the bridge is more at ground level when you get on it here and over here. It's more or less in the shadow of the former bridge, so we've just shifted it slightly over to the right and it's going to be slightly longer and slightly higher. So all in all, it should be a better bridge, which, barring any future bushfires, should last us for a good few years. So as you can see, what I've been doing is digging channels for the poles to sit in to bring the front at least more to ground level and to make the poles themselves level here <laughs> and then I did the same down the other side just dug little channels for the poles to sit in and make sure they're level between the two they may not be level on this plane but um, I'm not so worried about that it is pretty level anyway whilst I've been doing this Will's been chopping wood that we got from the tip and these poles we got from Will's family so again it's another project which is basically free just requires our time and energy and lastly as I say Will was cutting the planks as I was digging the holes obviously they're not attached yet and we haven't sort of put bracing in for the poles that go across but artist impression of what the finished bridge will look like obviously it'll be a bit neater and we just need a couple more bits of wood for the other end there but we're very pleased with that we've never built a bridge before and uh, we're thinking this will be a very suitable appropriate bridge for this purpose uh, and it's very stable and secure so in fact i think it's better than the bridge that was there before actually so good day's work <laughs>